All righty, all righty, all righty. Here we are recording. Um, so I was just checking in, re uh, confirming everybody's been getting their emails, the, the recorded phone calls, and then the added bonus little gift that I made for you all <laughs> and melted my mind trying to do so and learn new software. But I made that uh, slideshow video for you guys called the Ritz-Carlton Experience which was from the uh, Chicago Hair Show in like 2010, I think it was. And it was the vice president of um, Ritz Carlton doing his keynote speech on customer service. So, Elisa, you said you did see the whole thing. I did. And what was your takeaway or value from that? It's just unreal how much, how relevant things are from industry to industry as long as it's service. Correct. Um. I just, I don't know, I thought it was really, um, you know, when he talked about the guy getting out of the car and he was like, yo, what's up? <laughs> no, that was, that was the doorman in the full-on tux, dude. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, what's up? You know, yeah. like, it just, you can dress the part, but if you don't speak the part, or you can speak the part, but if you don't dress the part, wow. you know, how wow. it affects the overall experience of the person on the receiving end. Wow, awesome. Who else? Thank you for that feedback. Who else saw it and has some little ahas from it? Yes, Terry. Uh, it was absolutely excellent. I plan to have um, several of my stylists listen to it. Um, like Alyssa said, it's amazing to me how much crosses over from one industry to another. It really doesn't matter. It's all about building relationships <laughs> with people. Um, you know, I often, I speak at our cosmetology, our local cosmetology school a lot on the business of this business. And one of the things I often say is that technical ability has very little to do with success in this business. True. Um, you know, really and truly, it is all about the relationship with your team members, your staff, all of that. Awesome. Wow, you're so you're so correct. Who? Thank you for that feedback as well, Terry. Who else saw the whole thing? Please raise your hand. So that's it so far. On the half that you have seen, Robert, what were you got? What value were you getting? <laughs> Pretty much what everybody else was already saying that you know it doesn't matter. It, it's how you treat the people. You know. Yeah, you know. Here was my here was my biggest takeaway from that. I, as you can imagine, I've probably seen that thing fifteen times now trying to edit it and put all those slides together. And I had to re recompose the whole thing after I'd already done it in PowerPoint that me and my guy that I hired, we had to move it into the film software to create it, recreate it. But what blew me away was how the, um, I'm gonna actually go ahead and ask everybody to mute your lines right now. And um, cause la on the last recording with Gina, we had so much background noise and um, and then when you participate, just unmute. I want us all to still be involved, but I think this will support the background noise um, as long as you're not making noise in the background. So um, what blew me away and my biggest takeaway from that whole uh, slideshow was how the expectations are set from the management and the whole culture of the company. And it, it's a non-negotiable. Like when he's, you know, when they're interviewing and if they start to see that people are doing things not proper, they're caught and corrected right away. You know, he kept saying, no, that's not how we do things here. We don't do it that way, you know? And so I kept seeing, you know, us as salon owners and business owners that that's where the disconnect happens between five-star service and a five-star hotel experience. And at whatever level, even if we're off the charts, we're probably still not to the Ritz-Carlton experience culturally as a company. But when you set these expectations clear and defined from the orientation, from the employee manual, that there's a constant resource to go back to, to hold people accountable. And there's no way for them to say, I did not know. So we have to, as owners, we have to take full responsibility and ownership again. If things are getting away from us, look in the mirror because it's usually going to be on us for things that have been slipping. Even if you have managers underneath you, where's the connect between you and the manager and the accountability? And it's all, you know, the buck stops here, as we all say as owners. So um, 
for those of you who have not seen it, I really challenge you to please, please, please watch it. A, I spent a whole lot of time trying to give you all a gift, so please don't destroy the gift. <laughs> but B, I think there's just huge, amazing value in it for everybody. And I think it's a great way to kind of wrap up the S of service, servicing, and servant's heart. You know, their whole culture and, the, and hotel culture in general is very much service. But like, again, the Ritz, they take it to that serving and to that servant's heart mindset in my opinion and so I, I really like to challenge all of you hopefully by the next call that you've all seen it but um for those salon owners i think it's a great team meeting is to throw that up there i know the first couple minutes are a little wompy and loud because i'm moving the digital recorder around on my buy on my bag so it's a little obnoxious for the first two minutes but it's pretty clean after that um and it's about 42 or 44 minutes long. So I think it makes for a great meeting and then kind of come and talk about it on the back end of that. So awesome, we'll call, we'll call the S a wrap for the moment. And now we move into the M of marketing. So what I wanna try to do now, we'll see if I can pull it off, is I'm gonna move into screen share and I'm gonna pull up a PowerPoint um, that I created and see if, uh, okay, <laughs> it's here. Yay, that's a good start. <laughs> Oops, and then we're to that screen, and we're to there. So do you all see, uh-oh, do you all see the PowerPoint going on right now? Yeah. Okay, let me get to the actual slide that I want because it didn't start me where I wanted to start. So let me fast forward through all of these slides, and let me get to the M. Here we go. So. Building smart salons and stylists, service marketing, attitude, retail, and team, and boom, there's the big M. So what is marketing, team? Who can, and if you want to unmute and participate, what is marketing to each and every one of you? Not all at once now. Okay, I think that it is creating the need for someone to see you. Creating the need, and how do we do that? Well, back to building relationships. Okay. Uh, building relationships with people. When you show true interest, you find out what their needs are, what their desires are, and you give them solutions to find that. So how do you do that in the form of marketing to find out their needs when usually it's some sort of advertisement or a soundbite or a this or a that? Well, in my, in my experience, I have not done a lot of advertising per se. Okay. My marketing is more referral based. Okay. Awesome. And that's, and we're going to be talking about that in just a couple minutes as well. And thank you for that, Terry. Does anybody else have a little synopsis of what marketing is to you? Whoa. Always being in front of somebody, being reminded of you. So, for instance, I put my cards everywhere. Even though I'm super busy, I continuously get in the community, go to the Chamber of Commerce. I'm always present. Yes. Reminded of me. Because out of sight, out of sight is out of mind, right? Yes. Awesome. And so I know I saw you do the ribbon cutting in your in your uh, community, Delia. That was really cool with your grand opening and part of the whole Chamber of Commerce. You're you're muted, Delia. You're muted. I'm also sponsoring um, the Chamber of Commerce desserts for the luncheon. Okay. And I'm always at every meeting I can get to. And right. what has been your return on that investment? But I'm getting well known in the community. Are you getting clients? I have tons of clients all the time. Wow. Continue to new clients, referrals. Um, but when, from what I learned from Gino, even though you're still you're busy, you don't stop. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Awesome. Even I'm I keep doing it. Yes. Thank you for that. Who else has an idea about what's marketing to you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, who's that? I think marketing is pivotal. I think it um, really sets your whole career. I think you spend your whole time marketing because you're selling and you're selling yourself, you're selling your salon, you're selling what you can do, you're selling what you can't do, you're selling products. I think, it, <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't do anything really without it, I feel like. Got it. And so, Sarah, what type of things do you do to market yourself? Oh, we get to watch you do your hair? <laughs> oh, can you see me do my hair right now? <laughs> Very 
what, what kind of things do you do to market yourself, Terry or Sarah? Um, I do a lot of stuff on Facebook, and which is weird because it hasn't um, it hasn't benefited. Sarah, me. Sarah, could you come down to the camera a little bit lower so we can see your pretty face? No, oh, I'm trying to figure out how to get out of this screen, like to go back to to see you guys now, but I can't do it. Oh, so. you can't see us at all right now? No, I can just see the PowerPoint. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that's okay because. Uh, most of us move off the screen anyways. So, um, so anyway, so what I do is I do a lot of marketing on Facebook and Instagram, um, which hasn't really benefited me in the first like seven years of my career, but it is now. Um, so if I have an opening or I have a cancellation, I'll just put online, like, okay. you know, I had this, uh, cancellation available for this or this. Let me know if you're interested, message me or call the salon. Okay. It's the salon and usually it fills up and if it doesn't fill up then I'll still get messages for you know what do you have in two weeks Perfect. Or, so it's worked really really well for me awesome so you're you're rolling down people's feed and they're seeing you so again out of sight out of mind in their face you, you have a place right that's, that's great so you said that social media marketing did not support you for the first six or seven years what right. changed what changed for you to have results now? Well, my Instagram is pretty much just pictures of, of hair. Okay. Of, and um, my Facebook is, is not so much, but um, I never used to put on pictures of what I've done before, of like before and afters and- In your stuff. Facebook? Yeah. So I think that because I've started doing that a lot more now that I'm putting on there that I have availabilities and then people can go back and see what I, you know what I've done they, let me ask you let me ask you this do you have so are you speaking that you use you, you've done all this on your own personal page yes okay so what another thing to look at team is to get a business page outside of your personal page so on the personal page we can post all the um, vacations and the kids and the Christmas and the this and the that but then you have your you know Sarah rockstar hairstylist page and that's where you're blasting all your before and afters and, you know, some tips and tools and techniques and product, you know, the new products, that type of thing, where it's all isolated on a page about hair. And that's where you don't put your personal rants or the vacation or the baby pictures and stuff like that. You keep it business focused. It's hard to not slide them in. My personal page has almost become a business page to mine. I, I use both almost the same my personal and my breaking down your walls page. So just a little food for thought that having your own salon page is a whole nother avenue. And then just invite everybody to come like that page, like that page. And then that's where you train them to go to see things about you. So having said that, does anybody else have a little scenario about marketing for themselves or anybody has done something that's worked well, please. I have uh, been using the Facebook, the boost post thing. Yes on my personal page or on my professional page. Um, and I've had huge, huge success on $9 for two weeks or whatever. Yeah. I'm averaging 300 plus dollars in business to come in. So you did it for two weeks for $9, ran your boost. And for one week for $9. And I got the first time $175, the second time, uh, $300 in the last time, I think it was just over $300 in business. So you've ran it three times now. Yeah. $9 each time. Yes. So for $27, you've made $700. Yes. Wow. That's phenomenal. And how many, uh, did you get any new clients from it yet? I would say about 75% of them were new clients. Whoa. So how many clients does that equal? Uh, I think so. Five. So since our last coaching call, that's grown because I don't think that was your numbers on the last call, was it? No, I had a uh, for the disaster week I had last week for a number of reasons. I ended up pulling a decent week out. Well, we'll be talking in an hour, so I'll hear all about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny because some of these are. Oh yes, Christy. I actually, my last hairdresser that I hired found me on Instagram, which I thought was really interesting because it's not your traditional way that somebody would you know, search you out to work for you. So it's interesting to see who actually may be watching your Instagram and Facebook pages. 
So what did they see on Instagram that pulled them in, would you say? Um, I have my, I definitely am one that doesn't put much personal on Instagram. I usually just use it not only for myself, but my team. Correct. Yep. Um, years ago, it was just me, 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 but now I want to build on my team. So I make sure to put all their pictures up under my name as well. Okay. So I think she just saw like that we did cool colors and then I do a lot of the make tutorials and she wanted to learn how to do makeup. So she wanted to find a place that would teach her all of that. Wow. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thanks. And, you know, I think like you just said, that's an unusual place for people to have found you. I don't think it's that unusual anymore. I think it's mm -hmm. now it's just, it's their preference of choice on what's their favorite social media, but these are all our commercials now. You know, Facebook's a commercial, Instagram's a commercial, you know, Periscope's a commercial, all these, all these Twitter, all these are different ways that we get to advertise and commercialize ourselves. So thank you guys for those shares. I'm going to go ahead and start clicking through some of the PowerPoint slides and uh, create a little presentation. So if everybody will mute yourself again, um, that would be fantastic. And I will carry on with uh the presentation so we're going to tackle some marketing ideas here and before we can market um we have to really find out who we want to market to would you all agree and i know you're muted so i'm just going to assume that's a yes and <clears throat> let's talk about the characteristics that make up an a client um would you agree that you know i'm just going to go ahead and give some of them out real quick as we move through this slide. So characteristics of an A client, um, discretionary income, punctual, they respect us and our time, um, they're fun, they're friendly, they are into trends and fashions, and they refer, lots of, they refer us lots of guests, possibly five to 10 guests per year. They buy all our recommended retail. They are chemically dependent and they are um, an advocate for us. They promote us, they talk about us. Now, if we're talking about A clients, and you guys can start to unmute yourself as you wanna participate in this, where do we find A clients? Where do they hang out? Where do they live? How much do they earn? What do they do? So please throw some of those things out, team, and everybody take good notes on this, because you're gonna get some diamonds here. Christine, please. Um, I feel like a good place for hanging out would be like um, a hospital, like nurses and doctors is a good place to market. I know I've heard of people doing like referral cards solely for, you know, the, a specific like hospital where if they came in with it, they would get a discount. Awesome. Awesome. Who else? Thank you for that, Christine. Mm -hmm. Who else has a contribution? A clients. Where are they? Where do they, where do they live? What do they earn? I have a ton of teachers. Okay. So a number of my client, teacher clients hang referral cards in the staff room at okay. different schools. And I have a couple that work for the board office and they keep a bunch of cards on hand there as well. So just cards? Like referral cards. Correct. Oh, and what does the referral card say? Uh, it depends on the client. I have some that... Um, so if somebody's going to individually hand out as per your instructions, who did you think wanted to come in and it says so and so is entitled to? Okay. So that way she can, you know, Mary can hand Jane a card and say, Jane, this card is for you specifically and it's got Jane's name right on it. Nice. Very good. Awesome. Who else? Terry, what's 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 up with you? Where's your A's at? Um, I have a local spa, day spa that I take care of the owner's hair. Okay. Takes care of some of my spa needs. We barter. Okay. Uh, we cross advertise. She recommends us for hair for her bridal parties that she's doing cosmetics for and that sort of thing. Okay. We send her clients. She keeps marketing pieces in our salon for us to give the clients that entitle them to a discount to her spa. We keep marketing pieces at her spa that she gives to clients that entitles them to a discount with us. Very cool. Awesome. I love that. So they're strictly spa. Correct. That's and you're strictly hair? We are hair. Uh, we do have a nail tech and they do nails as well there, but they only do manicures and pedicures. So okay. it's really not a conflict. Okay. Awesome. That's great. 
I love partnerships that have synergy and it's a, and it's a mutual benefit. And that's how you get, and I'm going to be speaking about that in a little bit too. It's awesome. So thank you for that, Terry. Anybody else on, on a clients? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I really love working with people that are in the service industry, like yeah. waitresses and people that work in hotels. They see lots of people, and they typically treat you really well because they like to be treated well themselves. And have been on that end, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. You know, and and again, when you watch the recording of the Ritz, um, at the end of it, when he's done with his presentation. Uh, I asked the very first question, and my question to him was, um, you know, I had heard through the grapevine that when you hire somebody at the Ritz and they're going through orientation, after they're completed with that, one of the first things they do is they're checked in as a guest. Because how do you deliver a five-star experience if, A, you've never received it, and if you're not in that kind of financial category, that that is your norm and your expectation of service, you can't give five-star service if you've never received it. And you can't be a millionaire mindset if you don't have that kind of money. However, those things can be trained. And so what um, the gentleman told me, he goes, yes, that's true, Oscar, that once we hire somebody, we ask them to get their family, drive up to the valet and check in from that moment. And he goes, and do you remember what we did to you with you <clears throat> after you got hired? He goes, we took you on a tour and we showed you everything. Where's the restrooms? Where's the restaurants in the lobby? Where's this? Where's that? He goes, that's what I want you to do with your guests, just like we did with you. So it was really cool. Yes, Terry, go ahead. I was just going to say that uh, or add to that I have gotten many A clients from existing A clients. Correct. Because they, the people that I love having in my chair tend to have friends that I love having in my chair. Well, likes hang around likes. Would you agree, Terry and everybody? Absolutely. Yes. And, you know, I, I when I was behind the chair full time, mo I, yeah, now this, is, this is probably going to sound snobby, but it's kind of true. I don't think any of my A clients had D client friends. Yes. You know, likes hang around likes. So those people who nickel and dime us, we don't want referrals from them because their friends are just like them. So we want the ones who are, you know, they don't flinch when we say 200, 250 or whatever. <clears throat> so if our A clients, and I want you guys, this is part of your homework, please, is to start really identifying what are the characteristics and traits of an A client. Now we move to the next part of this PowerPoint slide. What are B clients? What makes them Bs? Can a B client become an A client? What makes up a C client? And this is, and then I say at the very end, why would we serve anyone less than a C client? Would you all agree? You know, I, I tried once I got clear as to who my A, B, and C clients were. And um, Alisa, did I do this with you yet? Were you identified and graded your clients or no? Some of it, and we talked about the feel good, which are your D clients. <laughs> okay. Some of my coaching clients, I've literally had them print out their roster of active clients. And yes, we are judging people, but this is business, so we have to, I call it strategizing. And they went through and identified through their roster of active clients, and they graded A, B, C's, and D's. And then they were able to put energy and focus into what they could get the highest possible returns from. Would you all agree that our actions and our activities, I call them HVAs, right, Elisa? High value activities. So we only have so much time in a day and we all have the same amount, 24 hours. And so therefore we got to maximize what we do, what efforts we put out into creating our day and our outcomes. So, in the ideal world, you have a full um, clientele of A and B clients and a couple C's that might fill in the gaps. And what's interesting, we're going to be talking about the five T's, the letter T as in Tom, in just a couple minutes. And one of those letters stand for the talkers. So we might have a great talker client, a client that talks and people listen to. 
but they that doesn't mean they're an A client. They might be a C client. They just have a big mouth that people listen to. And I don't mean a big mouth in a bad way. I mean a big powerful mouth and a voice that people listen to. So we'll, we'll chat on that in just a couple seconds here. So now that we know who they are, how do we get these clients in the chair? What do we do? What do we say? How do we ask for referrals? So Terry, you said most of your business is from referral. Could you, can you just kind of pretend like I'm your guest in your chair and ask me for a referral? Absolutely. Oscar, I just want to tell you how much I enjoy having you as a guest here at our salon. Uh, at Two Chic, we like to think that it's more than hair, and we like to deliver that as well. I would love to have at least three more guests just like you. Are there any of your friends you could think of that our services would help? Awesome. So I love that. A plus, boop, on all that. Um, do you feel like something's missing at all there yet, Terry? Uh, probably so, because that was just off the cuff. I love it. And that was clean off the cuff. The only thing I see that's missing is we want to give them complete clarity. So um, I have, I'd like to serve three more guests just like you. What's, what's the you part that makes them special, unique, the characteristics? What makes them an, who you want more of? Oscar, I love the fact that you respect my time. You always book your next appointment before you leave, so I have a special time reserved for you. you awesome. Are, you are always on time. You take my suggestions that will help you maintain your haircut in between visits. I love the fact that you come every three weeks so that you never look like you need a haircut, <laughs> nor like you have, have just had one. Wow. Do Very good. Do you have friends whose appearance is important is as important to them as yours is to you? Go girl, love these. You guys hope you hope everybody's taking some good notes. This is good stuff. So love that, Terry. And yes, so the distinction between your first one and your second one is you gave more clarity. Would you agree? Absolutely. One other thing that I would add it, that I do tell my clients is we do have a referral program in place. When you refer someone to the salon, it does not matter if they sit in my chair or in someone else's. You will receive a postcard that will give you a discount on your next visit. If you're coming for a haircut, it gives you a $5 discount. And if you are getting a chemical service, it gives you a $10 discount. We love to reward people who give us referrals. Awesome. Very cool. Now, um, I'm speaking to Terry, but I'm speaking to everybody. So, Terry, when we do that open, you know, kumbaya referral program, we might end up with C's and D clients that are referred to us. So the, the special sauce for everybody on your team, for those of you who have teams on, down below you, is to really educate them on their verbiage on how they speak to guests to ask for referrals. And really, really, really work and emphasize with your team how important it is for them to speak the clarity of the client they want in their chair to the client that's currently in their chair going to be the one giving them referrals. So we'll, and you're going to be seeing that as we move through this, this next slide here in a moment. So are we doing good team? Yes. Awesome. So this is when I do a little role play and we're going to pass on this for the moment, but you know, when we ask for referrals, it's about giving them clarity on who we want to serve. You know, what type of services do they get, et cetera. So here's, here's me asking for a referral um, from all of you guys. And shoot, I don't know how to move you guys around here. Let me see what I can do here. Okay, now I can see the whole screen. I just lost you guys. I don't know where you're at, but let me, I'll read this because now I have the full screen. It says, I am currently promoting my next smart salon and stylist group coaching webinar. And I've, I have a few openings from some amazing new participants, just like you all. Would you be willing to support me, team? And I'm going to assume that's a yes from everybody. So you want to get your raving fans involved by asking that, would you be willing to support me? I'm looking for salons and stylists looking to improve themselves and their business and are coachable. Do you know anyone that fits this description? Yes, who? And I asked for their names. And I'm asking all of you, you guys can send me some referrals if you'd like privately that I can uh, market to for the next series that starts in July. And I have a gift certificate for you to give to her, him or her 
which entitles them to $50 off the SMART program. See, that's a call to action. So I'm giving them a reward for the, refer for, uh, the new person that's coming. And then as a special thank you, Terry, um, as a special thank you, Terry, after Lisa joins my program, I will reward you with, 20, with $250 off a one-on-one -on -one private coaching contract. I know you could coach with anyone. However, the fact that you are coaching with me, I appreciate you and your business. So how is that, team? Oh, that's just Terry. How do I get everybody back? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so uh, whoever wants to unmute and share the value of how mine just sounded, if there is any value. <laughs> Nobody? I like that you ask for the name because usually when I have a conversation similar to this, I don't ask them to like think directly for a person because it puts their mindset more at work than just like, yeah, I'll hand it out at work. Correct. And now you could end up with that, you know, slimy person or the one that doesn't do chemicals or the one that gets two haircuts a year, right? Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, I gave you guys, do you guys have a clear picture of who I want to serve on my next series of calls? Yeah. Right. And I could, and I could even go into more detail on this. So here's, you know, what it could sound like from, you know, a salon perspective from any of you and how it kind of sounded for me back in the day. So let me uh, minimize you guys here again. So this one says, I currently have a few openings from exciting new clients like you this month. I, would you be willing to support me? Great, thank you. I'm looking for new clients that are into trendy cuts, great fashion color and highlights. I'm giving them clarity, yes team? Who do you know that fits this description, Alisa? Oh, great, thank you. So when will you be speaking or seeing Mary next? Fantastic. Well, I have this VIP card for you to give to her, which entitles her to $25 off her first color service or chemical service. There's my call to action. As a special thank you, Elisa, or as a special thank you after Mary comes in, I will reward you with $25 off your next color service. I know you can go anywhere to get your hair and beauty needs. However, the fact you continue to come to me, I appreciate you and your business. So how's that team? Hello? I like that you put this month. Yes, why do you like that? Because then it seems like there's urgency to fill that month. So people Correct. Don't six months. Yeah, now people are in real time thinking, right? <clears throat> and then did I give them clarity as the type of client I want versus do you know, you know, do you know anybody that wants to get their hair done? Now I can end up with 10 haircut clients, right? My VIP card is only good for chemical clients. And I made that extreme. And first of all, I didn't ask haircut only clients to send me referrals at all. So these are all one-on-one -on -one conversations at the chair that I had. And, um, so just so you all kind of know how powerful asking for referrals can be and how powerful some sort of marketing piece can be. Um, there was a time a hundred years ago that when I first was learning the business side of things, I created a six week goal for 36 new clients. Is that, is that pretty big? 36 client goal in six weeks. That's six clients a week that I had to get in the chair every week, every week, every week. So I was busting it, man. I was, you know, I was out in the community and I was at restaurants and I was at bars and I was hanging out and I was at the gym and I was at the golf course, et cetera. And I was making stuff happen, making it happen. And so six week goal, um, I almost hit my goal. I did not get 36, but I did get 35. However, at that time in my career, I was young, dumb, but hungry, and I didn't know any better. So I was just having this little marketing piece that said something along the lines of appearance is everything. Do you have it? Come visit hair artist Oscar Valencia, um, specializing in trendy cuts, uh, corrective color, and extraordinary customer service. That was my tagline. $10 off your first visit. So I, out of 35 people, 
I probably had 25 haircut clients and 14 and, and, and nine chemical clients or something like that. I converted a lot of those haircut clients. However, had I just done focused marketing right from the shoot, I might not have got 36 clients, but I might have got 15 chemically dependent clients right from the beginning. So we live and we learn and we reset. We live and we learn and we reset. So this is where I evolved to is to get the clarity that if I'm going to put effort in marketing, why not market to the only ones I want to serve in the bigger picture? And that's chemically dependent clients. Would we all agree with that? Yes. Okay. So then how do you start a conversation from scratch, from thin air? And here's where I would like to see some people unmute themselves and participate in that. How do you start a conversation from thin air? <coughs> I feel like that's kind of easy. And how do you do it? I would just say, hey, you know, I love when you come in. We have great conversation. No, 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 no. I mean to a stranger. I'm oh. sorry. Yes. <laughs> Compliment them on something that they're wearing or their hair or just something like that that's just very simple to like oh hey i love those shoes or hey your hair looks awesome i would love to play with it or you know <laughs> and then i'm like creep <laughs> exactly yeah right <laughs> but a compliment goes a long way <laughs> i'm sorry who said that that's beverly i would say start off with hello and with a big smile and then compliment them on something well, yeah, yeah, most yeah. definitely. Okay, and so now that we've complimented on their shoes or their bag or their hair, then what? You could say, I can tell you're really into fashion. I own a hair salon, such and such. I would love the opportunity to give you a great fashionable color or whatever. Nice. Love it. Love it. Now, it's one thing to kind of start to put some pieces together on what we say and how we say that then what holds us back from doing so on a regular basis? Fear of looking like a creep, like you just said. <laughs> <laughs> lack, yeah. of, lack of practice. Who you know, said that? Not Terry. Terry, lack of practice, okay. You know, and how do we practice? The more you say it, the more comfortable you become saying it. Amen to that. Okay, so, you know, I remember, um, at my last salon that I worked at in San Diego before I moved to Georgia. Um, it was in what well, it's in Mission Hills, which is multi-million dollar neighborhood of old craftsman homes. It's amazing how a 1930s home could sell for a million plus dollars. But I worked in a salon right in Kensington area right there. And um, what was really cool about that was there was a Starbucks right in the, in, at the corner of our parking lot. And I'm in line behind about four or five people. And I'm behind this girl with like this crazy beautiful curly hair, right? And down to like her mid back or so. And I'm behind her and I'm trying not to be too creepy, Rob, but I did say, I'm like, oh my God, I love your hair. I said, is that natural curl? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, and you're one of those that hate it, right? And she goes, yeah, it's just so hard. It's so much hair. And I'm like, well, do you ever wear it straight? And she's like, yeah, sometimes, but it doesn't stay and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, my name's Oscar Valencia and I'm a PhD. And she goes, excuse me? I said, yes, I am a professional hair designer. And she starts cracking up. And I said, I actually work at Salon Kensington right out here in the parking lot, across the parking lot. I said, I'd love the opportunity to have a consultation with you and share with you some possible alternatives to you for wearing your hair straight because you said you like to wear it straight. It's just too much work for you. She got her coffee, she bought my coffee, and then we walked over to the salon. She actually had time, we had, sat down, did a consultation, and I set her up for a freaking straightener. From Starbucks, I got a free coffee and $500. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, you never know where the magic can happen, but there's moments of magic everywhere all day long. And, <clears throat> you know, for us, it's probably maybe easier because we're the people that are on this call already show me that you are committed to business and growth. Now, for those of you who have owners with employees and staff, it's a whole nother thing to empower them to do these things that we do. 
So I think sharing some of these points and do role play and practice, that becomes part of your meetings, I think is going to be a whole nother extraordinary value that we all start to give. It's the practice and the role plays where you get to get the yuck out and find your voice because, you know, in practice, you had three mistakes, but you corrected them in practice. And on the fourth time, you got it right. But on the fifth time, you got a client because you were out there in the real world. So, you know, why should someone come do business with you? And um, our, our little Susie Lidgo, she couldn't make the call today. So she emailed me this morning telling, apologizing for not being able to be on the call. But she also sent me some homework. Um, where is she? Okay, that's weird. Her, her, her email disappeared. Or was it a text? <laughs> oh, shoot. She sent me her reasons why somebody should come to, her, come to her salon. And it was poignant that I wanted to share. I apologize for that one, y'all. Um, I still have She sent it an email. Oh, she, it was, do you have it? Go ahead. Can you read Stop. that? Thank you. <coughs> he said, why would someone do business with us? We have many years of operation. We give the highest quality service education to our guests. We believe in keeping up with all trends in education in the salon. Yeah. So that, you know, why are some reasons people should come do business with you? Elisa, why should somebody come to you? Me? Are you asking me? Alisa. Oh. Because they truly care about my clients and their hair. Okay. What else? Because I educate all my clients on products that I'm using and why I think it would benefit them. Okay. What else? I offer absolute value for the services they are receiving. Okay. Have you really thought much about this before? No. <laughs> I know. Isn't, but how powerful is it to identify wise, right? And this, yeah. is, this is what, we're in practice mode right now. Here's where we get to get the yuck out. <clears throat> so by you practicing this and thinking about this, I want you guys to start listing some bullet points why people should come to you. So none of what I heard you say, Elisa, like your first statement was that, um, what was your very first statement? I care about my clients and their hair. Correct. So you could care about their hair and about your clients, but can you be a shitty stylist? Yeah. Okay. I'm a so, shitty stylist though. Uh, but the, do they know that? You are, would you just say you are a shitty stylist? No, I'm not a shitty oh. stylist. <laughs> so they should hear that part though, that you're not, that you are X, Y, or Z, right? Okay. And Alex, if you would please share, why would somebody come to you? Um, well, I think because I'm trendy and I like to keep up with all the latest fashions and I try and show that on myself. Um, and I'm pretty competitive, I like to think. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, I love what I do and I think that I show that also. So are you fully booked right now, Alex? Not fully, but I'm, I get more and more busy every year. I can tell that I get more and more busy. Okay. And I'm, I'm almost five years in. Okay. And so when you, when you have slow times, it's, does it tend to be like this one weird week after three or four busy weeks? Yeah. Or it'll be like, I'm busy like three days and then I have like one awful day. And that's like every week, three and one bad one, three and one bad one kind of thing. Sometimes, yeah. Okay. So if you were, if I was your client and you were coaching me and I had three good days and one bad day a week, kind of three or four weeks in a row, what would you tell me about me and my business at that point? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. Okay. Does anybody have an idea what that scenario might sound like? We're not fully booked. We yeah. just talked about this. Correct. So when we have this secular thing going on that there's a couple good days and then a couple slow days. And then a, the next week, a couple or three good ones and then a bad one. And then the third week, three good ones and a fourth bad one, et cetera. So that tells me that there's openings every week still. <coughs> so, you know, we can't determine what our need, we can't get to our finish line until we determine what our needs are. 
So how many clients do we have? And so that's an important factor to start to look at too. How many current clients, active clients do I have? How many do I need? And then we create the strategies to fill the gap. So Alex, if you were just a guess, how many clients, more clients do you think you need? Uh, I mean, I would love to have like 200 more, but how many do I need? So, wow, that's a new, but I'm going to pause you right there. So what makes you say, I'd like to have 200 more? I mean, I want to be booked solid forever for the rest of my life. I mean, I, I, I could never have too many clients. So uh, do you, you're equating a full rock star business to quantity of clients? Is what it sounds like, yes? <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, I honestly, I don't know how many more I would need. I don't know. Okay. I have to sit down and think about that. I know, and that's what I'm, that's my job is to make you guys think, right? So I want you to really start to understand and think about that. So I'm going to share with Alex, but I'm sharing with everybody a story about my dad. When I first got, my, when I first got my license and got into the business. So I'm a second generation stylist, three out of four kids. And... My dad didn't start cosmetology school until he was 38 years old, and I was a newbie, three, three kids at home to feed. And so I grew up watching my dad hustle and work his behind off to provide for us as a family. So fast forward, I'm an adult, I get my license, I come to work at his salon, and week one is when he dropped all these freaking diamonds on me. And he said, son, you need to get about 300 clients. When you have 300 clients, you will have a rocking business. And I'm thinking to myself, shit, if I have 300 clients, my life's going to look like yours, and I hate myself. And so I never said that to him because he would have kicked my butt. <laughs> but <laughs> I kind of felt that inside of me. And what I was really – and then all of a sudden, I didn't want that, I didn't want that, I didn't want that. <laughs> Fast forward seven years. I woke up one morning, and guess what my life looked like? Your dad's. I had 320 clients. I was doing 12 to 13 people per day, five days a week. I had a business that was busyness, but I was not making rock star money. So I didn't have a great business, but I had busyness. Can anybody relate to that? Because what I did not have was a business full of my ideal clients. I had a lot of care cuts and bang trims and once in a while a touch up and then maybe a highlight and then a bunch more haircuts. And I didn't understand the game for me yet of business. So then fast forward when I started working with businesses, uh, business part of the industry and started being coached, I was given, as some of you have as well, uh, tools to create your vision statement for your ideal client. And so I want all of you for some homework is to start jotting some of your notes to be identifying who is my ideal client. You can do it in bullet points. My ideal client is a female between 25 and 80. They are chemically dependent. They earn, they have discretionary income or earn $80,000 or more. It's funny when people do this, sometimes they'll go, they make 50 to $70,000. I'm like, why do we put a ceiling on their earnings? You know, they make 80,000 or more. They can come in at any time of the day. How cool is that little point to put in there? So now they could be my daytime clients because we all know our evenings usually big, get bi built up, et cetera. So when I wrote my ideal vision statement, I realized, shit, my clientele sucks right now. And I had to reprogram my mind and my thinking to start pursuing my ideal versus settling for what is so. And once I started to do that, and by then I was a color educator, I started to change how I dressed and how I looked every day. And I became a different magnet on the type of people that sat in my chair. Before I was doing crazy numbers, I was just crazy. <laughs> and then I started to understand the business and started to get my faculties together. So um, that was a huge thing for me to be able to start to build my business. And then coming back to Alex, what I was able to determine by doing, because I do these things called what if. Well, what if my average ticket was 75 instead of 50? Well, what if my average ticket was 150 and I played these games out and what I found out is I didn't need 300 clients and Alex, you don't need 200 more. What I found out I needed, I needed my ideal, ideal in capital letters, 125 clients. 
So if I had 125 clients that were my ideal, and my ideal at that time was a client that was double processed, color and highlight and haircut, and they were a $155 average service ticket. And that became my norm, not my dream. And when, when your dream becomes your norm, you're living in a completely different world at that point. So Alex, I'm going to challenge you and everybody to start focusing way more on your ideal so that you can continue to grow into what you really, really want. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when we meet somebody, team, we have about 11 seconds to make a powerful first impression. What impression do you leave people with? And would you like to improve your first impression? <clears throat> so here's my value statement. I'm Oscar Valencia Jr. I'm a coach, trainer, and consultant specializing in the salon and spa industry. I serve people who want measurable growth in their business while living a life in balance. So does that speak what, who, I, who I am, team? Alisa, is that, do I provide that as a coach? You're muted. Yes. So would you agree that since we started coaching one-on-one -on -one, that you're seeing growth in your business and you're starting to live a life in balance? I'm still working on the balance, but absolutely growth in business. I said starting to live a life in balance. But are you way more conscious about balance now than you were? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, that's my value statement. And I want all of you to start coming up with yours and working on your value statement. So when you meet somebody out there, this is kind of my elevator pitch when somebody says, who are you and what do you do? <laughs> so who do you know, team, that is not doing business with you? Friends, family, and acquaintance. Now, having said that, I give you my disclaimer. Be careful, be careful, be careful. I love my family, I love my family, I love my family. I love my family so much I didn't do my family's hair. I love my friends, I love my friends, I love my friends. I love my friends so much I didn't do their hair. Unless they paid full price and were not after the cheap friend discount. Because isn't that what friends and family want, everybody? Right? So if you can... Now, I get moms, you know, thank God there was three hairdressers in the family and I never had to do my mom's hair all the time because she had options. <laughs> but for those of us who are non-salon families, yes, I get you're going to do your mom and dad and family. But, you know, I'm Mexican. I have huge family. So I got cousins everywhere. And no, I wouldn't do them unless they became a full paying client. Now, outside of that, who are some acquaintances and business relationships? And I want you guys to start writing down two or three names of people right now that are not doing business with you that you know and that you might be able to market to. That's acquaintances and that's, you know, maybe even friends. <clears throat> now, what businesses could you contact and partner with? And that slide says La Mirage. So in San Diego, my second to last salon that I worked at was called La Mirage Hair Design. And a half a mile up the hill on this big old hill, was the apartment complex that I lived in at the time. Really, really high end. It was like resort living. It was like a Vegas, it was like a Vegas pool and all that. Um, and it was called La Mirage also. How funny. And um, rents were really high. So I knew people that lived there were my ideal client. And it was literally at the bottom of the hill, a half mile away. And so I partnered with the newsletter from that apartment complex. And they, they were already, the manager of the whole property was a client at the salon. I sat down with her. I said, what would it take to get in your monthly newsletter? And she goes, well, just print something up and I'll, and I'll put them in. So I printed up, I think, 1,200 flyers. And it was my bio introduction and a, and a call to action, you know, for them to come in. And I started getting a bunch of clients from that apartment complex. Then I did a thing with a personal trainer. And... I had a sit down meeting with this trainer, Diane. And I said, Diane, I want to make you look like a superhero even more so than you do right now. Cause she was this freaking big old bodybuilder type girl. And I said, I want to make you look like a hero to your clients. And here's what I want to do. I want to give you 10 gift certificates. And I had them on the table. I said, five of these gift certificates are what I call blanks for whatever they want, haircut, color, highlight, or all 
and five of these gift certificates are for haircut and styles only. And I want you, I want to give these to you, but I don't want it to make it look like I gave them to you to give to your client. I want it to make it look like you're giving these to your clients as a special thank you for a new client that you're excited to work with as a personal trainer or a current client that's re-upping <coughs> that you're excited to work with or say thank you for re-upping by giving them this gift. So I gave her 10 gift certificates. How many do you think were claimed, you guys? Out of 10 gift certificates, five the works and five color, uh, five cut styles. How many people came in out of 10, do you guys guess? I think four. Four? Anybody else? Eight. Eight? Wendy says all 10? All of them. Ten. All of them? So out of the 10 I gave, um, four came in. Four came in, one only came in one time, and then she actually moved. <laughs> I got to do her hair on her way out of town. But the other three, two of them were, hair, were the haircut people, and then one was the chemical. I kept all three of them for the next seven years till I moved to Georgia. But the two haircut clients, I literally converted to colors on one of them on visit one and the second one on visit two. So I gave 10 gift certificates, I only had to give four redemptions and three of them stayed for seven years. Did I make my money back on that investment? Absolutely. Yes. And one of them was every three weeks color client. So yes. you know that one was great, right? Yes. Um, so sometimes it takes a little investment to be able to get some return. Now here are the five T's. Write these down, you guys. The five T's of word of mouth marketing. <laughs> So there's, I have a great book and it's called Word of Mouth Marketing by Andy Cernovitz. And he talks about the five T's, the talkers, topics, tools, <laughs> taking part and tracking. So who are the talkers? Who will tell their friends and family and associates about you? And here's what I was saying earlier that sometimes the talkers are not necessarily our A or our, an ideal client. They might be a B, they might be a C, but they're that person that's kind of the go-to. And we probably all have a, a friend, an acquaintance like this. Do you all know somebody that like knows all the greatest, latest movies that's out? And that's your go-to on movies. And then you might have another acquaintance, friend, or associate that they are always at the newest restaurant as soon as it opens. Or they know the coolest bar, that type of thing. Those are the talkers that they speak and people listen and then they go check things out. <clears throat> so if we have to start identifying who are the talkers in our chair, who are our clients that are the talkers? Now that we've identified the talkers, we gotta give them some topics to talk about. What will they talk about? And you have to determine that. Um, you know, I just came back from the show and I learned some new color techniques that I'd love for you to, that I wanna do on you. And then they go tell their friends, oh my God, she's got all the newest techniques. She just came back from the show. We got, what are the tools? How can we help the message travel? So maybe we make some sort of post and we ask people to share that. You know, th when he wrote this book, this was before social media, but I'm bringing the word of mouth marketing into the digital world because everything that can be said out of our mouth can be said online now. Taking part, when should you join the conversation? So there are times that people have, um, they're, they're talking about you and there's a thread and you're reading it. And once in a while, you want to jump in and, and participate and contribute. And other times you might want to clear up or clarify as well. And then tracking, what are people saying about you? We got to be on point. Are you guys going into Yelp and looking at what people are saying about you? Do you have, do you really know what the word is about you and your salon or yourself individually out there in the community? So out of the five T's, my main focus has always been the first one, the talkers. Let's get people talking and let's give them something to talk about. So here's an example of handing out business cards. You know, they say, the marketing gurus say that you can expect a 10% return on your efforts. That's what they say. Now, they, I've never met they, I don't know who the heck they are, but they got a lot to say sometimes. And when they say stuff, it's interesting. So. They say 10%. I say, I think you can get way higher than 10% if we look the part and wear the goods.
So like, uh, like Alex said, you know, I, I'm, I like trendy clients and I like to keep up on the trends and wear them. If you're not wearing the goods, you're not selling the goods. I promise you. So here's an example of an old client and friend in Georgia. This was her salon's real numbers when I was coaching her. So if, you, if, if we expect 10% return and we handed out 500 cards at 10% return, we could, expect 10, uh, 50, we could expect 50 new clients. However, if we're looking the part, dressing up, even when you go to the store, if you put some effort in, instead of rolling in sweats and a ponytail, you never know who you might meet. So two cards a day, five days a week, 50 weeks a year, you will have handed out 500 cards. I believe you can get like a 30% return. So therefore, you can expect 150 new clients. Well, their current average service ticket at the time at that salon was $78.32. So if they got 150 clients to come in only one time, that would produce $11,748 revenue. Now, if they came in every uh, six, seven weeks, that would be nine visits a year. And there's $105,000 right there from two cards a day. So that's an example of what you can expect for your ROI, your return on investment, by handing out cards. So if your clients look great, they will tell others and let them know. We got to get them chemically dependent. And we have to train them to be able to duplicate their hair. How many times does a client say to us, oh my God, I can never make my hair look like you do. And when I was young and dumb in the business, I'd be all patting myself on the back like, duh, like, of course you can't do it like I can. And that was all ego driven before I really started to understand the facts of I have to train them how to duplicate this hair. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll mute you, Rob. So we have to train them how to duplicate their hair and we have to be able to continue to um, have them be our walking billboard and advertisement. Because would you all agree that most of our clients that give us the most referrals are the ones who duplicate their hair really, really well on a regular basis? Yes, team? Yes, I agree. Thank you. And so, you know, when they look good, they will sell you. We got to give head turning looks, head turning styles and unique styles. Now, we got to put it out there. We have social media galore now. And I'm, it's, you know, you can find it or you can join them because it's not going anywhere, y'all. So get on board. You, and I love that we're talking Instagram and, you know, Twitter, um, Periscope, Facebook, et cetera. So again, the five T's, word of mouth marketing, who, who, will, um, who will tell people about you? What will they talk about? How can you help the message? That's huge. On our next call, you guys, get ready because Liz is the social media guru. She is going to rock your world with the hows and the whys and all the little nuances. She understands the algorithms of Facebook and what they are doing and how they're promoting you and pushing your content out there. And it's about carrying a badass business card, you guys. That's your first impression. Um, for those of you who have seen my business card, which is the logo that you see at the top of this page, but... For those of you who have actually held the card of mine, does my business card rock? I mean, it's thick, yes? And there's sturdiness to it, and it's strong. Um, so you got to have a wow business card. <laughs> These aren't even – but here's, here's my business card, you guys. There's my front, and then the back says um, oops, the bricks and my information, et cetera. And it's, it's a hard card stock, like almost cardboardy. And people, the second they touch it, they're like, oh, you gave me two cards. I'm like, no, I gave you one. And they're like, wow, this is, they always say something. And that's the ideal. You want somebody to say something good. Wow, what an amazing card versus like, oh, okay, thanks, you know. And then they'll throw that one away. So, you know, first, one time for a first impression, what does your card say? And what does your marketing pieces say about you? What does your image say about you? Um, do you look like a six-figure stylist and professional? I know for a fact before I got serious, I was casual. I was very casual, jeans and boots, and, you know, I was cowboy up all the time at work. Well, casual people spend casual money. So when I started to look like a million bucks, I wanted to make 100000 
And that's how you start to have to bring it on. You have to elevate it to a perspective that people are like, yes, I want to go to that. That's magnetic. And it's energy, that style. That's who I want to be like. Now here's the million dollar question. Would you go to you if you met yourself out in the world? Why or why not? And we'll kind of wrap up with this one. <clears throat> and so I'm going to, I'm going to end the, the stop. I'm going to stop the share and bring you all back onto my screen. And we'll wind down going across the board with everybody here. I'll start with you, Delia, first. So random day, you're out in the world. You met you. Would you go to you? Why or why not? Well, yes, because I'm an American Board Certified Master Hair Color. So I am very passionate about having healthy, vibrant hair color. So I think some people get stand off by me. But then as soon as I say it, they're like, wow. And then I start to consult with them. And they're like, you know your stuff. And then they trust me. OK. Now, would you agree that we and they make judgments before our mouths even open sometimes? And mm -hmm. so before too much comes out of your mouth, do you think by them looking at you that they would go to you? Um, it depends. I'm at the <laughs> gym. I, I, I don't think anybody cares. But um, so, yeah, I have an issue with some of that. Like, I'm not always 100% makeup, hair done, and all that. You know, when you have toddlers and teenagers and juggling as much as I do. Um, but I try my hardest. Yep. And you do very, very well, obviously. So thank you so much for that. Alisa. Would you go to you if you met you? Absolutely. Why? Even on my bummiest day, even if my hair is in a ponytail, it's clean in a ponytail. I always have my makeup done when I leave the house. I never leave in ripped, dirty, nasty clothes. I always look somewhat put together, even in yoga pants and a sweater. Awesome. Love that. Alex, would you go to you if you met you? And why or why not? Yeah, I would. Why? I think I look cute all the time. <laughs> I love you. Yes. I, I really cute. You do, even under that blanket with your dog geek. <laughs> <laughs> I wear, I do. I dress real cute. Good. That's so. It's so important. You know, it's so. Yeah, and I wear my hair and my makeup. I wear cute hats. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Christine, would you go to you if you met you? Maybe not right now. <laughs> <laughs> When I'm put together, I'm put, there's two me's. There's homeless and then there's put together. <laughs> that is awesome. awesome. <laughs> homeless end. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then, uh, Terry, you're muted. <clears throat> but would you go to you if you met you? Absolutely. Why? Because I am approachable. I'm interested. I listen to other people. And I speak to everyone. Yes, you do. <laughs> and your, po your post was so cute. Bye, Rob. Take care. Good luck, man. We'll talk, we'll talk later. Um, your post was so cute yesterday, Terry, when you said, uh, what is it you notice about me first or something like that? And everybody said your eyes and your, and your smile. And I said your accent. <laughs> yes, and, that, and, that, and my accent, when I'm out of town, my accent definitely is a conversation Breaker, uh, icebreaker, <laughs> opener, where are you from, all of that kind of thing. That's funny as that. Thank you so much. And uh, Melissa, would you go to you if you met you? Yes, I would. I, Why? Um, I, I pretty much am always dressed for work because I usually stop in here at least once a day, it seems. Yeah. The only time that I'm not is if in the summer when we're on the motorcycle. And at that point, the friends that are there with me know my hair my head's in a helmet all day long and this is what i look like and, <laughs> and and i usually do most of their hair so they know what i look like when i'm at work so. it's hard to find helmet head and look and look cute yeah. <laughs> thank you for that and miss sarah i just gotta say right now hair is rocking girl you look adorable <laughs> thanks and would um, you, you would go to you or no that's actually it's funny that you asked me that because it's a question that i've thought of a lot cool. um I feel like yes, and I also feel like no. What's the so, no part? The no part is sometimes I think it's hard to um, keep someone's interest or gain a client when you meet them at like Walmart. Okay. But there's also been um, guests that I have met out and about um, that have come to me. So I usually, I, I think I'm approachable. I think I'm, um, 
I know that I, I handle verbiage really, really well. Um, I actually grabbed my business card for you because okay. I wanted something that was different. So it's a picture of me, which I feel like is a little obnoxious, but it's different. I love it. And then on the back, it's just kind of plain. And these are my old ones, so they're beat up. But on my new ones, they're the same. But I have my Instagram and everything on them. Okay. Um, and we actually all now have pictures of us on our business cards at the salon. And it, it it's worked really, really well. So I, I love that. I feel like yes, and I feel like no. I feel like it's either like, yes, I like you, I'm coming to you, or I'm busy, I'm not interested. Go Sarah. Oh. Go ahead. I'll I'd go to you, Sarah. Oh, thanks. I go to you too. And, and side note, I love the card and I love that it's your picture. I love that it was clean and tidy and organized in its layout. I love the back that against the black background, the letters popped and were easy to see and read. Good job. I give that card without touching it and feeling it, I give that card an A right now. So good job. Thanks. Alex always does the cute. Tell Susie Bravo. Mark, I'm jealous. Oh, <laughs> and Miss Tracy, good morning, darling. How are you? <coughs> I can't hear you. Are you there? Tracy, go ahead and speak. Are, are you muted? I'm not hearing you. Okay, we got no sound on you today. I'm not sure what's up. Um, I'm gonna pa I'm gonna pass on. I'm gonna pass for now. Sorry, Tracy. And yes, I would go to you too, Tracy. <laughs> um, okay, now I'm to the phone to the phone calls here. Uh, Beverly, are you there, my dear? Yes, I am. And would you go to you if you met you? Yes, I would. And why is that? Because I look good, and I always feel good, and. And I'm always smiling. So people always come to me for something. They say, why well, do you have a beautiful smile? And then I, I engage with them. Awesome. And are you starting to see some growth in your salon too? And your yes, business now? Awesome. Yes. Well, I miss coaching you, my darling. And I am so glad you're part of us on this call now. That's awesome. And we love having you with us now, Beverly. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. The 512 number was who again? 512-653-7821 number. Okay, we'll go to that number. <laughs> who is this? <laughs> okay. I didn't know who it was. It's Marissa. I work with Delia. Oh, okay. Hi, Marissa. Hi. <laughs> would, would you go uh, to you if you met you? On an Emmy given day or... <laughs> talking about because uh, sometimes I look <laughs> I have the, I'm the same way I have a, uh, I either look homeless or I look like I'm about to just go and rock the world <laughs> so my business card has my picture on it so I tell them I look like this I look crazy but I can make you look like that <laughs> so just trust me gotcha uh, now ha I'm gonna I pause like to give them that up let me let me pause for one second. Having said what you just said, I look crazy, but I can make you look like that. What I'm just going to challenge all of us on is when we walk out our door to the world, let's just put a little two or three more ounces of effort into us and watch what can happen as far as our results. Because there's moments of magic right outside waiting for you. Nobody's going to come bang on your door saying, I mm -hmm. want my hair done by you. So we have to become this walking billboard and we're on stage and now it's time to put it on. So we show our goods every day to the most of our ability. And it's, yeah, it's going to require a little more effort. I get it. You know, yes, we're going to be lazy at certain times and certain days. And those are the days you don't even want to hand out a card. And <laughs> that's Tracy's hair day. <laughs> at least I know we're all concerned about our look as we're talking here. So, uh, Melissa, I'm just going to challenge you on to be a little bit more aware and maybe kick it up a notch, okay? Yeah, my only thing is I have rosacea on my skin. Okay. And one thing that I like to do is I like to show my clients because I ask them sometimes for a before and after picture. Okay. And they're sometimes hesitant to want to give it to me because they don't want to look, you know, they don't want to. But I just tell them it's a transformation. 
and I, I, I've done it myself. I've like given myself the before and after picture uh-huh. to let them know that we're all human and we all like, you know, we can all just embrace what we have I love it. and change. Wow. That's powerful. So, thank you. For, thank you for that. <laughs> share. Yes, Delia. Uh-huh. Um, Marissa, when I take her out and about in my chamber meetings and all that, I get approached a lot and everybody's like, wow, she's beautiful. Wow. She's amazing. Wow. Can her makeup look great? Um, so she gives her skin breaks every once in a while, but for the most part, um, she's on tea with her makeup. I've gotten people from Instagram and Facebook come to my salon because they want us, they want Marissa to do their makeup. Awesome. So yeah, she's more on point than she's saying it. But Got it. Okay. Person. Awesome. Thank you for that. And then, um, the other 512 number is who? Hilda. Hilda. And would you go to you, Hilda? Hello? Hilda? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I wasn't muted. Oh, okay. Would you would you go to you if you met you out on the street? Yes, I would. Why? Well, because I like to be me. You know, I'm not, uh, sometimes I, I'm not, you know, <laughs> dress up good, but I like to be me, like the way I am. Okay. So I don't have, I don't want, I mean, I like to uh, show to the customers or, or to the people who I really am, you know, like in my personal, um, I don't know how can I say it, but in my personal way. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much yeah. for that. And then the 814 number. Thank you. The 814 number, I just unmuted you. Who's that? Eight one four. Two for it. Okay. I'll, who's me? Oh, that's you, Tracy? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. So you're on your phone and you're in twice here. And your computer? Oh, I'm not on my computer. That's weird. Okay, I have two. I have you on two screens. One I see you, and the other one I hear you on. Oh, okay. Well, I'm on my phone for both. That's <laughs> funny. Okay, so what, what? Why would somebody come to you or not, Trace? I'm the same as some of the other girls that mentioned. If I'm home, absolutely not. <laughs> I wouldn't go to me because I am having baby food on me, or dirt, and we're playing in the mud or something. But when I'm out, I absolutely I dress um, like I want the money. Oh, yeah. Got it. Awesome. Thank you for that, Tracy. And Miss Wendy, let's see if we can. What? Okay. So Miss Wendy says she's approachable. She's, she's what? <laughs> reproachable, relatable. And I smile a lot. And she, and she dresses the part when she leaves the house. So <laughs> your back looks really good, Tracy. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell everyone, great job today. Did you guys get value today? Good stuff. And the next call is going to be freaking awesome with Liz. And then I have a call this afternoon with Eric Fisher, where we're starting to try to lock down his dates. Um, I believe he's going to speak on retail. And then um, I have... Uh, Eric Fisher. Then we have Larry Curtis speaking on attitude. We have Tracy um, Robinson speaking on attitude. She just had a $5,000 a week last week. Oh my God. Can't wait to hear about that. And she's a cancer survivor. And then um, we have uh, Eric and then we have band council. Who's going to wrap up the series on team. And I either, I'm either going to take the other team call or we might have a special guest, you guys. And if anybody saw my live this morning, we might have one of my buddies who's an ex-professional baseball player and is a three, he has three championship World Series rings as a coach. He retired last year. I won't say his name yet because I haven't really necessarily got him on board yet. But if I can get him to come on board and speak team, I don't know anybody that knows team better than a World Series champion than that. So. I just love you guys. I am really, truly honored that you guys continue to participate. I know you guys could have done anything on a Monday, 
and invested your money anywhere, but the fact that you have with me, I appreciate you and your business, and I love you all. Thank you guys for having for being here. Have a great day, you all. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Do the homework and the work that we were talking about, you guys. Really start to create your, your ideal client vision statement. Identify where are they? Where do they hang out? Do some of the work that we talked about today. I'll, I'll upload this video. Again, I'll, I just send it out to everybody now because it's just easier to send it out than trying to find who missed the call. But, you know, it's on YouTube, and I don't want it to stay public forever. So try to watch it. As, or those I know those who aren't on the call. I'm going to hopefully get them to watch it in the next week or so. But thank you all. If you missed the Ritz Carlton experience, please, I'm going to only leave that live for one more week. So please go watch that really quickly. And if anybody wants it beyond that to share at a meeting, no problem. Let me know. I'll take it off private status so you guys can show it for a meeting or whatever. But great job, you guys. I love you. I'm giving you my all. My question and, and request is that you guys give it all back to me as well and more so give it to yourself. Have a blessed week, you guys. Take care. God bless. Have a great one. Thank you. Thank you. The smartest salons and stylist in America. <laughs> Bye, y'all. I end the recording now. Cheers.